well, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Welcome back to Wrestling with Horror. My name is Andrew Dreamer. As always, I'm here to talk about professional wrestling, horror movies, and look at all the ways that they intersect, connect, and everything in between. Now, I wanted to take a break from all those horrible shark movies that we've been taking a look at and take a look at the original summer blockbuster, the originator of so many iconic lines, usually delivered in a very cheesy fashion by horror YouTubers these days. But that being said, let's check in with Chief Brody, Hooper, Quint, and of course, Bruce the Shark, and take a look at Jaws. Jumping right into the plot of this movie, our movie starts with a bunch of teens partying on the beach during a summer night. Now, during this party, Chrissy Watkins and a friend of hers, they're all drunk. They decide to go for a swim in the, in the ocean, so they take off running down the beach. Chrissy gets in the ocean, and her friend kind of just passes out drunk on the beach. He doesn't hear when she is attacked by a shark. She's drug around, and you can just see her flailing in the water. It's a very effective scene. It's a very effective opening scene, but that's how our film starts. The next morning, we're introduced to Chief Brody, who gets a call saying he has to go to the beach, and that's where they find Chrissy's body. Now, the medical examiner tells him that he thinks it's a shark attack, and so that's what Chief Brody puts on the, uh, the police report. Later on, after he is trying to find all the beach clothes signs and figure out exactly what to do with this problem, he is confronted by the mayor of the town who has brought the medical examiner along with him. The mayor refuses to shut down the beaches. He refuses to acknowledge that this is a shark attack. He convinces the medical examiner to change his mind and say that this was a boat propeller, perhaps, which is pretty ridiculous when you think about it, but that's what the mayor decides to do. So, of course, the beaches stay open, everybody's swimming in the water, and here's where we get a very brutal and pretty emotional death, actually. A young kid named Alex Kentner is swimming in the ocean after begging his mother to go out there once again to swim. He's on this yellow float, and he is attacked by the shark, and all we really see is the shark kind of coming up and rolling over on him. It's pretty terrifying, actually. And that's when everybody scrambles, gets out of the water. People are being trampled, and we end the scene with Alex's mother kind of frantically running around the beach, shouting her son's name, looking for him. But, of course, we know what happened to him. The town holds a big meeting to decide what to do about the shark, to decide whether they're going to close the beaches or not. And that's where we get the infamous chalk, the nails on the chalkboard scene, and Quint he offers to catch the shark, but he doesn't want no first mates. He don't want no help. He wants to go out there on his own. $10,000, him and himself, no crew. For that, you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. But the town decides not to pay that. They decide to let other local fishermen try to catch it. And this is when our scientist from the Oceanographic Institute shows up. And this is Matt Hooper. And he is played by Richard Dreyfuss, of course. And he is probably my favorite character in this movie. That's just, I like his personality. I like how funny he is. He makes a lot of jokes. And that just, it's part of the reason I really like this movie. Some of the fishermen catch a shark. They catch a shark and they have it strung up on the pier. And the whole town is kind of going crazy. They're excited. They're all happy. The newspapers are getting pictures. But Hooper goes in and he starts measuring the mouth of the shark. And, well... Let's just say the bite radius doesn't match up with what the bite radius on Chrissy Watkins' body was. And that's where we get another really infamous moment from this movie where one of the people on the pier asks what kind of shark it is and Hooper says a tiger shark and then we get this iconic line. What kind of shark? It's a tiger shark. A what? Later that night, Brody and Hooper decide to cut open that shark to see exactly what was in that shark's belly, to see if it is the shark that attacked Chrissy Watkins or killed Alex Kinner. Of course it's not. So they decide to go out on Hooper's boat and do a little bit of inve investigating of their own. Hooper decides to go scuba diving into the water down to a wreckage. And that's where they find this boat that has been, have basically just been destroyed by a shark. And that another a floating head just comes out and it's a big jump scare. 
when I was a kid, this part scared me to death, and it's still a very effective jump scare to this day. The mayor still refuses to close the beaches even after all this. I mean, what's he doing? He's basically just lining people up for the dinner bell. So everybody's in the ocean swimming again. All of the tourists have showed up. Everybody's having a good time. That's when a fin pops up out of the water. You see it kind of swimming around, and this girl yells, shark! And everybody panics again, they get out of the water, and all the police boats and the other people surround the fin, and it's just a couple stupid kids pulling a dumb prank that you should never do if you're in the ocean. Except this time, the actual shark swims into another part of the ocean that they call the pond, and Brody kind of starts walking over there, kind of going, oh, what now? But then, you know, he kind of gets that sense of urgency that, you know, maybe I should get over there. So he starts running. Now, the only issue with the shark being over there is that Brody's son, Michael, is in the pond with his friends. So he's running over there. The shark tips their boat over, and there's another guy who's kind of trying to help them with their sail. The shark knocks these boats over, and the shark attacks that guy. And we get the shot of his leg kind of just falling through the water. It's pretty brutal. It's gruesome. So they finally get Michael out of the water. He is in shock. They take him to the hospital. But the really sad part about this scene is that Michael's younger brother, Sean, is sitting on the beach. He was playing, building a sandcastle, just having a good time. And now he is just completely distraught. He's sobbing. He is scared for his brother. He doesn't know what's going on. It's just, it's a very emotional, sad scene. At the hospital, Brody basically forces the mayor to sign a, um, a piece of paper saying that Quint is going to go catch the shark. He's going to give him whatever he needs, and he's going to send him out there to catch the shark. So here's where we get Quint, Brody, and Hooper all gearing up to go shark hunting. They load up on the boat, they head out, and you got Quint singing his uh, sailor songs. So they're out in the middle of the ocean. They're completely just away from the island at this point. And what they're doing is they're throwing some chum into the water. And if you're not familiar, chum is basically just blood and some fish guts that you throw in the water to lure sharks in. So he's got Brody um, just chumming. He's throwing the stuff in the water and Brody asks if he can steer the boat instead and Quint says, nah, Hooper steers the boat, you chum. And then Brody says, well, I, I can go straight ahead. Why don't you come chum some of this stuff? And at that point, the shark comes right up out of the water scares Brody to death. He goes just completely stone cold. Cigarette still in his mouth. He backs up slowly into the cabin of the sh of the boat right next to Quint and looks over at him and he gives this iconic line. You're gonna need a bigger boat. So the three protagonists, they start scrambling and Quint gets his harpoon gun and they attach a barrel to the shark to kind of the barrels are used to kind of tire the shark out so it comes to the surface and they're able to easier deal with it. So they get the barrel attached and they kind of go about their day. The shark leaves them alone. And then we get my absolute favorite scene of this movie. They start telling these stories about all their scars, about, um, you know, getting bit by a shark or an eel um, stinging them. <laughs> they're all drunk at this point, so they're all just laughing at everything they're telling these jokes and that's when they ask quint about a tattoo that he got removed and he says that it is the uss indianapolis which is a it's a real story about a united states battleship that had just delivered the hiroshima bomb and was on its way back it was a top secret mission and it got slammed in the side by japanese torpedoes and so the battleship sank a lot of people went in the water and Quint was one of these people. Now, while these people were in the water, they were attacked by sharks. Several people got eaten by the sharks, and that's the story that Quint tells. The best part about this scene is Brody and Hooper's reaction to the story. They're kind of sitting there, and you can tell that they're not even really acting at this point. They're just in awe of what they're hearing. Robert Shaw delivers this speech in just such a effective just amazing way, and these actors are just in awe of what they're witnessing. And it's, it's, again, it's my favorite scene in the entire movie. So they all start singing songs again. They're all really drunk, like I said, and that's when the shark comes knocking on the hull of the boat. It starts breaking things, water's coming in, so they all start scrambling again, trying to pump out the water. They attach more barrels to the shark, but it does not keep the shark up. It's still able to go under, and then they finally get the shark tied up, and they're starting to kind of 
drag the shark instead of it dragging them or leading them on a wild goose chase and they burn the motor out so the ship is basically just there it is completely dead it's got some structural damage and it's sinking i mean it's actually sinking so that leaves them with no other option but to get the shark cage that hooper brought along with them so they put it in the water hooper gets in the water he goes down he's going to try to tranquilize the shark and stab it in the mouth and put it to sleep and kind of take care of it that way Unfortunately, that doesn't really work because the shark rips the cage to pieces. Hooper has to kind of scurry off down the side. He goes and hides underwater, not to be seen for pretty much until the very end of the movie at this point. So when they get the cage back up, they obviously think that Hooper is dead at this point, And that's when the shark attacks again. It comes up on the back side of the boat. And at this point, the boat's already halfway underwater. And it's tilted, Quint slides right down into the shark's mouth and gets completely devoured in the most gruesome, brutal scene in this movie. It it's, looks great. The effects here are just immaculate. They're amazing. And again, it's just a really, really effective death scene for a really good character that a lot of people really like. I mean, I mean, seriously, this shark devours Quint faster than Brock Lesnar with a jobber. So that leaves Brody. What's he to do? He gets attacked again, but this time he is able to grab one of the air tanks that uh, that Hooper brought with him. He finally like shoves it in the shark's mouth and kind of pushes it away. He gets Quint's gun and he climbs up onto um, this pole. And he's there and he's just shooting at this shark, yelling, blow up, over and over and over again. And finally he delivers one more very iconic line of this movie. Smile, you son of a... And the shark blows up. The shark is no more. Brody, the one man who was terrified of the water that nobody would have thought would have been the one to deal with the shark, to kill the shark, is the one that finished the job. He was put on the spot. He had to do what he could with what he had, and he accomplished the goal. So he's kind of just sitting there. He's laughing. He's happy. And the boat's still going down. He's completely in the water now. And that's when Hooper resurfaces. He goes over there and asks about Quint, who Brody just kind of goes, no. And then what do they do? They get on a couple of the barrels and they start paddling back to shore. And that's where our movie ends. Like I said, this is one of my favorite movies of all time, let alone my favorite horror movies of all time. And when we get to the rating and some of the positives and negatives, you're going to really understand just how much I like this movie. Moving over to the positives of Jaws. Now, the directing of this movie, it was very early in Steven Spielberg's career, but he just does a phenomenal job, and I don't think anybody else could have done it the way that he did it. The cinematography was amazing. The dialogue was written really well. I was just, I was very happy with everything about this movie. The special effects, I thought were really good. I know some people like to talk about how fake the sharks look, and yeah, the shark looks pretty fake sometimes, but you know what? I don't care. I, I really don't care. It does not take away from this movie for me. It looks good. It's a practical effect, and anytime I'm getting a good practical effect, I'm happy. And like I said, the special effects throughout the movie were just fantastic. Another positive is going to be that scene that I talked about where they were singing and the... Um, Quint telling the USS Indianapolis story, my favorite scene of the movie, definitely going to be a big positive. And tying right into that, um, Hooper's goofiness. Richard Dreyfuss plays this part to perfection. I love his little banter with Quint and the little faces he makes at him. It just, it makes for a really fun movie for me. I really enjoy stuff like this. And I think that his character is one of my favorite as well. The cast of this movie just had amazing chemistry. All of them, they work really well together. They play off each other and it just, it elevates all of their scenes and it elevates the movie as a whole. And you don't get stuff like that a lot. Um, back then, today, it doesn't matter. You don't get a lot of chemistry like that, but this was lightning in a bottle as far as chemistry within the cast goes, in my opinion. Moving over to the negatives. Now, I'm just gonna be perfectly honest. I don't really have negatives. Um, yeah, the shark looked fake sometimes. Uh, that's a negative, I guess. Um, I could say that I wanted more of Hooper's goofiness in the movie. 
Um, that could be a negative, I guess, but that's really about it. I'm not going to go nitpicking through this movie just so I can say some negative things about it. I'm not going to do that. So that's really all I have negative to say about the movie. On to the rating for Jaws. Now, I picked this movie specifically because I knew it's a great movie. In my opinion, it's the best shark movie that you're ever going to get. That being said, on the scale of how bad this movie is, 10 being the worst, 1 being the best, Jaws is going to get a 1 out of 10. And I think it's very important that you understand the reason that we're doing SOS being how bad the movies can be. I'm not ranking them on how good they are. I'm ranking them on how bad they are. That was kind of my whole point in doing this. I know that's a little unorthodox and it might not make sense to everybody, but I wanted to clear that up right now and tell you that's exactly why I'm giving this movie a 1 out of 10. Because if I'm being perfectly honest and in my opinion, Jaws is about as perfect as a movie can be. Of course, there are always going to be a few improvements you can make here or there, uh, smoothing out some edges. But Jaws is nearly perfection for me. And of course, that means it's a 1 out of 10. I don't think I'm going to find any other shark movie that comes anywhere close to that. I do like other shark movies, but this is just, that's where I am on this one. So that is Jaws. As I said, one of my favorite movies of all time. And I just, I needed a break from all of the really crappy, crappy shark movies that we've been watching. I'm going to get back to those. I'm going to try to choose some a little bit better. That way they're not so bad. I, it's hard to pick all these shark movies. There's a million different ones out there. But I just, I needed some enjoyment from these shark movies. And hopefully you enjoyed this review. Also, before I forget, if you want to save 20%, off your order at redcon1.com, make sure you're using code ANDREWDREAMER at checkout. It's going to be right up here so you can see it, but make sure you're using that code at checkout. I really appreciate it. We're on the road to 500 subscribers. I really want to hit that goal by the end of the year, so if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please, please hit it. There's going to be some perks coming out soon. Um, I'll let you know more about that when I get it all worked out. They're coming very soon, so just make sure you're staying tuned for that. Let your friends know about the channel. And in the meantime, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below. All of the interaction really helps me out. I wanna have conversations with you all in the comments. I'm really looking forward to what you think about Jaws. What's your opinion on it? Is it your favorite shark movie? Just let me know all of that stuff down in the comments below. But until next time, my name is Andrew Dreamer and this is Wrestling With Horror.